All right. Uh, welcome, everyone, to this week's IPLD meeting. It's uh, March 18th, and it's late for me, so therefore I might be a bit slow. <laughs> um, all right. So what do we have in, on the agenda? So um, sorry, where's my window? OK. Is, I'm not sure if my crypto is in sync. Okay, so uh, first of all, we need a note taker. Any volunteers for note taking? Okay. Sorry, yeah. that, that was me actually with a question, which is where is the grip pad? Oh, the grip pad. Okay, yeah. So it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> so. I paste in the chat. Uh, so, uh, Rod, was this uh, you volunteering to take the notes? Yeah, thanks a lot. Yep, Monday night. Thanks, thanks for pasting. All right. Um, so, um, yeah, so let's start with uh, what we did the past two weeks. And then, um, yeah, just um, any, any additional um, agenda items. So, I'm the first one, um, so I mostly worked on the JS IPLD API. Hopefully, uh, yeah, I will merge it soon. Um, it should be this week. And the previous week I was at the conference, a geo conference. Um, I I will post um, some information about it at the um, event issues um, because there was also like kind of like a few things for IPLD, but I will updated once I find the time. Um, other than that, I don't think I have anything else. So the next one would be Eric, who is still typing, but he can still give us an update. <laughs> uh, it's a fair I was typing. Um, <clears throat> I forget if the docs PR got mentioned last time we had this meeting or not, but in case it wasn't, um, there's a bunch of documentation in the Go IPLD Prime repo now. Um, a lot of that should actually probably be raised into the specs repos eventually, um, especially some of the stuff that's speculating about like what's the role of schemas and how will this um, be relevant to advanced type stuff or um, data layout stuff. Um, so we can do that at our leisure, but there's a first draft now anyway. Um, this, just this weekend, I finally saw a way out of the wet paper bag of linking design issues that I had been flailing around in for a while. So a huge new diff landed with that. And I think it fixed all of the weird interface frustrations. Um, so <clears throat> there's now a, a SID link package, which abstracts all of the linking away into this one. Um, and there's also just an interfaces alone set of things that's exposed in the main IPLD package. And so actually, if you don't end up using any of the linking stuff, you do not, strictly speaking, have to import the GoSid package tree, which is kind of cool. Um, and all of the uh, uh, DAG Cbor and DAG JSON stuff now drags in SIDs because, of course, it does. Like, that's the definition of what those formats are. But again, if you don't use them, like if you brought your own encoding system that technically didn't use DAG Cbor, for example, you wouldn't have to drag Go sit into your dependency tree. So that um, is that was hard, and that is cool, and I'm really excited. Um, it's just landed and needs lots of tests now. Um, Hannah already looked it over and found at least one glaring typo bug because she's better eyes than I do. So thank you, by the way. Um, but yeah, with that nailed, uh, I have some more to-dos around iterator interfaces, and then it's actually time to like get to work for real on a bunch of selector internals, finally, all of this background stuff is done. And I don't want to put him on the spot, but also Adin might have volunteered to do some integration work in a project of his, which is going to be a much needed uh, kicking of all of the tires on this stuff, so I'm very excited for that. Yeah, I actually I had a couple of questions. Uh, the the fluent um, like builder stuff that requires passing around like functions everywhere. 
Um, I feel like we might want to have like a, a wrapper layer around that for like the obvious things so that you don't have to pass around functions everywhere because lambdas and go are not very pretty. Yeah, you might have seen my big lament about lambda syntax. In yeah, the, the go <laughs> slack, yeah. Yeah, suggestions welcome on that. Okay. Uh, cool. Yeah, the rest, I mean, the rest I'm just still sort of playing around with and figuring out what's the, the best way to make use of the best way to make use of things. Um, yeah, but using the fluent libraries is going to probably be important just because otherwise you have if error not equals null everywhere. Yeah. Which, you know. Go lang. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, so who's next? Yeah, so um, um, Terry would be next via Michael. So. <laughs> Michael? Oh, yeah. Hey, how's it going? Um, <laughs> yeah, so I've been trying to get the OKRs done. Um, yeah, there's there's a couple pull requests open that I need uh, people to kind of comment on. Um, I think the main difference is that uh, it's pretty clear that we need to spend more time like using these um, in order to do like the next kind of round of feedback. So essentially, I'm giving us like Q2 to finish up all of this new interface work and then hopefully be able to spend all of Q3 just building stuff on IPLD, like with IPLD, um, and really like, you know, putting all of these interfaces through the ringer with some real applications. Um, so things are being a little bit restructured in the roadmap to, to fit in for that. Um, and the OKRs are coming into alignment for that as well. Um, what else? Um, I don't know, my, my brain is everywhere today. Um, yeah, that's all that I have so far. I think there are a couple threads that I opened that I forgot about. Um, oh, and I don't want to forget. Um, Terry asked me um, to bring up, uh, she opened an issue in IPLD for anything that we need in proto school. Um, so she's trying to figure out the roadmap and the capacity planning for proto school. And if we're thinking of like getting more developers on it, what is our timeline for that? And what kind of functionality do we want out of proto school to do that? Um, so yeah, so I'll, I'll comment in there. And if anybody else has any ideas, like you're welcome to comment as well. Cool. Uh, thanks for the update. Um, then there's Rod next. So uh, I've been around here for a week. <laughs> so uh, last week, I, uh, I mean, it, it was productive, but um, this is just so much. Uh, it's, it's, you know, <laughs> yeah. Head's been, yeah. Um, uh, so I, I've just been doing a deep dive, trying to, you know, explore. Uh, and figure out how to how to properly form a mental model of the whole thing um, mm -hmm. that's serviceable. Um, I've pulled together some interesting data sets um, to play with with IPLD. Um, one of them is a um, a genetic animal genetic data set that from work I used to do twenty years ago. So it's got really deep pedigree linkages. So um, you know lots of interrelationships and um, you can do all sorts of stuff with it, like calculate inbreeding and um, anyway, it's, it's just a, an, inter, an interlinked data set, a deep one and uh, playing with dictionaries as well, just to do really um, start thinking about uh, basic sorting and um, what the, the challenges are around that. So with that, I started, um, I started work on a, uh, I want to put a pull request in probably to the, maybe to the roadmap repo, um, just with some initial thinking around ordered collections um, as a way to get feedback from you all um, since you've been thinking about it longer than I have um, just the, the problem space um, the possible ways that it can go um, and just to clarify that thinking for me at least but then also to um, present that as a uh, as part of the roadmap for the public so they can start thinking about it too um, and I was, I was talking um, in, in Slack yesterday about how it's the kind of thing we might want to do with um, some of the other stuff that's mentioned in the IPLD um, spec and roadmap repos, things like HAMPT. Um, why is HAMPT mentioned so obsessively everywhere? 
Um, because it's the only collection. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, and, and maybe that needs, needs to be explained because hemp is not a widely used data, data um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, data structure. Data structure. Um, so why, why is that? And then that leads back into the thinking about what this is all about. So um, I'll try, try and get a pull request up uh, in the next couple of days and um, loop you all in to get some thinking from you. Um, cause I know there's some, I, I know I see glimpses of it from each of you when you're doing pull requests and you're having discussions, there's these things that you mentioned that are obviously either fully in your head or collectively owned amongst you that are not explicitly stated anywhere. <laughs> uh, and I want to try and pull some stuff out while I'm, while I'm still new and that's obvious to me. I don't want to really, I'm, yeah. I, I know I'll, I'll eventually fall into that as well. Um, but while I'm new, I, I want to try and use that newness to, to extract some of that stuff. Um, so that's me. I, I started doing some basic writing as well, just around some, st I started writing a, um, a really basic intro doc to um, uh, um, multi hashes and CIDs, um, just from first principles. And that could be a good blog post. And I was, I was pondering whether maybe we want to put a blog on IPLD.io and start putting some writing up there. Um, or if it should all go to IPFS.io. Um, but that could be a discussion for later. Just put it on medium. <laughs> I don't know if we need to build another custom blog. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll, we'll have that discussion um, when I've got something to show for myself. Cool. Cool. Um, also, cool. when you're running that, did, did you did you see the the doc that we have like in the specs repo? Um, yeah. Okay. Cool. cool. Okay. Making sure. Hannah, any updates? Yes, I have updates. Um, so uh, one is I put up a PR and I put the link in um, the uh, in the pad uh, for like an RFC for how GoFileCoin is going to talk to Grassic. Um and I put in an agenda item on this. I, I just, I'm, I'm wondering if I can see if I can knock out one last question before I hand it off to very critical people who are going to uh, tell me it's all wrong. Um, I'd like to at least not be the only one who's wrong. Um, uh, and so, so I'm wondering if I can get two minutes to look at that during this meeting. Um, and then the, the other thing is I put up a big, chunky PR for some graphs and code. Uh, the first big component, which is this thing called the request manager, which is basically the thing that just like sends things out to the network and then like tracks them from as data comes back in. Uh, it doesn't interface directly with selectors at all yet, um, but it's a bunch of chip code. Uh, the Go core dev team this morning summarily decided that Eric should review it, though I don't exactly know why, because it's mostly networking code. Like, uh, but uh, if anybody wants to look at it, I will think you're super awesome. Uh, and the link is in the notes. Um, and if no one on this team looks at it, uh, then I'll start picking people from either team and tracking them down and harassing them. So uh, that's the plan. Uh, it's not a very, very well-developed plan, but uh, yeah. Um, you were hanging a lampshade on that particular decision-making mechanism, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Uh, so that's all I have. So what, what kind of, like, maybe I can be of some use? Like, what kind of review are you looking for? Right. If it, yeah. I don't know. I, that's a good question. Um, I think I'm trying to pull up this PR. I believe I put maybe some... When I write a PR, I try to put up like questions I'm particularly seeking feedback on. Um, hmm. Uh, have you? Uh, have you? Uh, have you? Uh, Dean, have you been in the um, the bit swap code before? Not really. Not exactly. No. Yeah. So not yeah. So just it's I've used, it's been a bunch of like libp 2 p stuff and writing right. a lot of things that are have been like. The kludges because graph sync doesn't exist yet. Sure, sure. But okay. so like that's why it may or may not. I may or may not be helpful. Yeah, I mean honestly, like I'm looking ideally to if there's there's, I mean, the architecture. I don't feel like I need a whole lot of feedback on because I mean, are the basic classes because like it's either a a copy of BitSwap or b like was proposed before and no one objected so. 
you know, tough luck. Um, so, uh, but I would love, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you're, you're down for trying to check for potential concurrency type bugs or whatnot. Here, let me see, I, I wrote this pull request up and I think I maybe put in a for uh no okay I I have not I have not identified key things that I need feedback on but let me think about it and and I will send it to the Graph Sync Tiger Team channel and if those things seem like things you could provide feedback on that would be super awesome so that's all I have. This is not this is not to exempt Eric from from any of uh, <laughs> him finding anything I'm gonna miss I'm just also happy to lend a pair of eyes yeah no for sure for sure. Yeah. Um, cool. Thanks. Are there, are there just really few people uh, working on Go GraphSync? Is that is it just a really small group, and so there's not really anyone? <laughs> it's basically henna. So, yeah, <laughs> there's one person. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. Pull, pull, pull request. Welcome. <laughs> it's open source. <laughs> Just pick up. An yeah, issue. but getting take reviews. It out. That's the challenge. Is the, oh is well, the... but I mean, if you submit a pull request, I'll review it. Then you'll get, you know. <laughs> get All right. Um, um, I, that that's a good question. It, it's gonna have, and that's the other thing is like, that raises a longer term issue, which is like, I'm not gonna be on GraphSync forever, and we need like, we're gonna have to get the bus factor above me yeah. uh, on the code base at some point. All right, um, Michael, you're um, muted in case you are talking to us. <laughs> I was just saying, I'm surprised that Steven's not reviewing it. He must just be slammed with other stuff. Like, if he, he seems to have opinions about this stuff <laughs> and knows go. So. Yeah, yeah. I, may, I may, I may, I just felt, I mean, like, he was sort of, like, not jumping at it in the meeting, and I feel so bad. Like, he seems like he just, just keeps... Yeah thrown on everything and I, I didn't want to he's got it. he's got a lot right now like yeah. a lot um yeah. Yeah. so but I'll, i may reach out to him anyway because he's the only one who really does has done a lot of this sort of networking code who's close to anywhere near to me in terms of yeah i'm wondering if maybe we could grab one of the people who's just come back to the org with more time like um kabuksu i don't know if he knows about bit swap in particular but this seems like something he might be good at reviewing I'm I can, just I can, too, but I can follow this, up. Yeah. Yeah. This looks beautiful at a first glance, but it also looks like a lot to review. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's like a thousand line, new lines with like zero deletion. Many, many channel. Wow. All right. Um, so, uh, yeah. Then um, coming to the other agenda items. So, uh, Hena, do you so do you still want to ask a question, or I didn't quite follow? So, is this still a thing, or is this just a code? Yes. Part? Yeah. No, I'm wondering if I can get one more question. Yeah, about. sure. Go um, ahead. So, uh, do you mind if I share my screen really quick? And if, if this doesn't sure. naturally resolve it in itself in third, you know, two minutes, then you can just comment offline. It's more just to explain. The thing. Yeah. Sure. Um, Okay, sorry, just give me one second. Okay. Uh, so basically, the issue here, um, this is like how Filecoin is going to use this um, this uh, library. Um, Can and the main you treat question, your font size a yes, bit, please? Yeah, sorry. It's Follow my screen. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Let's see. Come on. Does that work? Oh, this is all going to happen much later, isn't it? Okay. Is that better? Yes? Yes. Getting there? Yeah. Thank okay. Um, all right. So as soon as I'm able to move this around, Jesus. 
Uh, I'm sorry. Now, now my computer is still responding to Zoom requests that happened three minutes ago. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, I mean, sorry. I don't even need to show the cut. The cut. The question is whether we should return to Filecoin and or IPFS um, blocks or IPLD nodes. Um, and this is not me, the, the wire protocol itself definitely deals with blocks. And then once they come off of the wire, the question is they have to be, they're, they're either going to be converted back to nodes within GraphSync before it goes to Filecoin or Filecoin can decide whether to convert them to nodes or not. Uh, and that's the, that's the question. Um, does that make sense in terms of, I'm sorry, I can't. I seem to have lost control of my screen. Oh, here we go. Let's see if we can make this a tiny bit smaller. Uh, come on now. There we go. Um, oh my God. Yeah, so basically, um, like the, the, re the request interface is going to return two channels um, because I know Jeremy's not as big of a fan of the visitor functions going to be an error channel and a progress channel um, and basically the progress is either going to be blocks or nodes and the question is just whether it should be blocks or nodes um, and this is again this is on the side of the person making the request after the blocks have gotten back in and they've been verified by the IPLD traversal does that make sense does anyone have input on that what's what's the advantage of giving blocks like why, why would you want blocks the only reason is because blocks are something that basically the question the, the way it would affect things is if you use blocks you're going to be more friendly to a system that isn't fully integrated with IPLD prime which Filecoin for sure isn't in IPFS definitely isn't um, and so that way you will like, so basically the only thing you really need to do with IPLD prime otherwise is con uh, constructor selector specs, um, which is sort of like a one-off type thing versus if you're getting nodes back and you like the rest of your system doesn't use nodes, it really uses blocks. You're going to have to do a lot of work to get it all the way back to, to blocks, or at least that's, that's my thinking about it. Um, on the other hand, as I say that, I'm like, well, that seems like that's designing for now, like designing for making now super easy with the potential effect of limiting things later in my head. Does that make sense? Because if folks are like, I don't have enough context at all for this, I'm happy to talk offline. That problem description makes total sense to me, and I think you understand the trade-offs already, and I don't have any more answers than you do. Okay, I think, all right. I think I'll just, shoot for nodes and see if they objects. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll just use nodes because that seems clearest. So, or that seems like, that way there's no difference. Th that way basically GraphSync is using IPLD, uh, go IPLD prime as its primary, like, uh, yeah, it's, it's like, it's speaking a language of IPLD prime. So, cool. Okay. That, that, seems be, that, that seems to be in line with the, with what I'm seeing is a desire to to make blocks more transparent. Um, yeah, yeah. There is an interesting thing because the graph sync wire protocol as specified, which has which was sort of like designed largely outside of this immediate group, um, and then like is not really open to a massive rewrite. Um, uh, uses blocks as part of the transmit protocol. Um, it, it, it's not a, not a huge issue, um, but uh, yeah, we'll, it, it, we'll probably, we'll be fine though. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Okay. All right. Well, I have enough input from this group. If the, nobody thinks like, you know, the decision one way or another is terrible, then I'll just propose one. And if they object, then, then they'll object. Okay, cool. Thanks. Um... Hannah, can you stop sharing your screen so we can see each other bigger again? Thanks. Um, yeah. So the other item 
in there that I put in there is about the, the time of the meeting because I did kind of like the exercise and looking up when the Europeans changed their daylight saving times and the Australians changed back or at least uh, where uh, Rod is living. So I was wondering, uh, would it be okay for the group if we would move the meeting half an hour earlier? Because like in two weeks for me, it would be then 1130 and I would rather prefer having it at 11 o'clock. Um, but this would mean that at after April the 7th for Rod, it would be seven o'clock if I looked it up correctly. Would this be fine or not? So this just like, yeah, I, so it should really be an open discussion. So, um, yeah. So what, what do you think? I just yeah. want murder time zones. <laughs> I'm, I'm used to dealing with this problem in, um, in my winter because I go reverse to everyone else. So it just gets two hours more difficult every year. Um, so, so that's fine. That's, I'm used to having to deal with that. Um, and it's only once every two weeks. So not a big deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I would then change again the time of the meeting for having it half an hour earlier, basically. Cool. cool. Thanks. This would be great. Thank you. Awesome. Great. Um, because then I finally have the chance to, again, adjust my sleep schedule because like Cooney is perfectly fine, but my plan is to get earlier to bed. So <laughs> this hopefully helps. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, is there anything else? people want to talk about. Why is m m m m m uh, Michael the one being tired, although it's in the middle of the day, <laughs> except for everyone else? Because I have a baby that wakes me up at 5.30 a.m. Right. Good point. Fair enough. All right. All right. If there isn't anything else. Um, I will close the meeting and we will see each other again in two weeks, half an hour earlier. Um, all right. Goodbye.